I'm Barbara Gon Mueller, host of today's conversation in preparation for the 2016 Rotary World Peace Conference in Ontario. As we begin to look at the speakers, you will see why you want to go to Peace Conference 2016 and sign up today to make sure that you are part of this historical moment working for peace. I will be asking questions for the next 15 minutes of our guest, Rukmini Ayer, who is going to talk to us from Mumbai, India. We are so honored to have you here. She is on track E, the workplace track, and you will see her picture. And I hope you listen to this conversation with her several times. Take out your iPhone as you're listening and record it. She's a wonderful organizational transformational consultant. She's a trainer and a coach. She's based in Mumbai and runs her consulting firm, Exalt Solutions. She is a Rotary Peace Fellow and works on making the corporate space conflict sensitive and compassionate. Welcome, Rumini. Thank you, Barbara. It's a pleasure to be with you. When I look at you and the work that you've done and that you've been a Rotarian since 1999, you've had the opportunity to see peace. What is your perspective about peace? I believe peace begins within us, and it is possible to achieve world peace if we are able to collectively accept all aspects of ourselves, good and bad, and of course also make our day-to-day decisions in a very conscious manner. And of course, I also think peace, the process to peace can be taught and taught as early as childhood, which also means that the parental home and schools become very important spaces for all of us as human beings, although we can, of course, work on it later as adults as well. But finally, I think peace is a choice that we make, and uh, it's, it's a dynamic state. It's not something that can be achieved once and for all. It, it's a conscious process of aligning ourselves and balancing every moment of our lives with, with the changing realities around us. It's so interesting that you say that peace is a choice. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, because conflict in itself is not so bad. I, I think there is conflict every moment of our lives given that the reality around us is changing and therefore peace becomes a matter of conscious choice. I, I think a lot of conflict arises around us because we are in resistance with our environment, mm-hmm. which could mean, for example, we are in resistance with changing cultural paradigms across the world, we're in resistance with changing economic trends, changing technology, Mm -hmm. and therefore that creates conflict. If we are Mm -hmm. willing and able to align ourselves and accept changes as they come along, it's possible to have real peace within us and therefore around us. Thank you. I see you're a Rotary Peace Fellow, as I mentioned in your introduction, and that means that you have a very special distinction as a peacemaker for the Rotary Club. Are you going to, when you get to the World Peace Conference, give us a little bit about your presentation, quick overview. I'm speaking on creating compassionate organizations. Uh, given that my professional work of the last 15 years or so has largely been in the corporate context and uh, I do think that that's an area that's often neglected when it comes to world peace. Billions of us are attached to the corporate world in some form or the other, whether it's as employers or employees or consumers or just communities around corporations. And we are impacted, whether we know it or not, we are impacted by corporate policies, procedures, and also the interpersonal dynamics with our peers and colleagues. And it's possible to make organizations conflict sensitive by creating conscious policies and processes. And of course, also by training individuals to be compassionate in their interactions with others. And this is my focus of the speech at the Peace Conference. Conscious capitalism is a need Mm -hmm. that I think we all have in common. It impacts the lives of our employees. It impacts the lives of our family. Work should be a sacred duty. Don't you agree? Absolutely. I completely agree. And it's not really about, there's been a lot of conversation over the last few years about work-life balance and work versus life. And I think 
just by using this language, we're creating a lot of conflict for ourselves. It's, the conscious capitalism is also about accepting that work is very much a part of our life, and it's you know it's not work versus life. It's it's an expression of ourselves, and it could be a creative expression if we let it be. Well, I was just reading on the internet today that Larry Page is the top-rated CEO by his employees at Google. Mm-hmm. I think they have a compassionate workspace there. He got a 98% rating, which is That's incredible. Beautiful. It is oh, yeah. beautiful. And, and when I go to Google, I feel comfortable. And so I'm sure you're going to be able to give us those techniques that you're using in the corporate culture to make them more compassionate, to make them every employee count to use their strength. Is that, but am, I, am I on the right path? Yes, that, that, that is my intention. I, I would like to share a process of facilitating dialogues, and these could be internal or external dialogues, which could resolve mm-hmm. conflict. I've been influenced a lot by people like Marshall Rosenberg and David Cooper, Ryder, to name a few, and to this, I've added my own experiences and insights, and a process has evolved over the years, and it is still evolving, but that's something I look forward to share and see what people have to say about it. I like that. You're going to involve the audience. And I loved you talking about Marshall Rosenberg. He says that if your needs are met, there's no conflict. Is that kind of what he said? Or if your needs aren't met, we have conflict? It's not so much about not having conflict, but... It's about need-based communication. So what he primarily says is that all of us as human beings operate at three layers. Uh, And I think the most uh, talked about layer is is the layer of thought, thought, opinions, judgments that we share all the time with each other and with, with ourselves. But that thought layer is influenced by a layer of emotions and feelings. And that in turn, impacted by our needs. So all emotions that come up, which lead to thoughts and actions, are ultimately influenced by an internal need. And all of these needs are valid. Conflict usually arises because we try and invalidate somebody's need, and therefore the person in his or her entirety feels invalidated. And that's the essence of Rosenberg's work. And that seems like you're going to be able to present that at our conference. I am looking at your bio again, and I see that you have had a master's degree in management and organizational psychology. You're involved with the Times Foundation in Mumbai. I am Barbara mm-hmm. Gonmuller, and we are listening today to Rosh Rukmini Ayer, who will be presenting in the 2016 World Peace Conference. How are you getting your message? Because it's so powerful about conflict that to our community leaders and to national and world leaders? So personally, I do hold a lot of conversations in whatever spaces that I can. So I do uh, engage in a lot of speaking engagements across with my clients and otherwise also within the community here, Rotary being a large part of it. You could, of course, as audience, you could access a lot of my videos on YouTube if you search with my name and... I also write a lot that that's been a passion and this could be at the individual layer. So it could be about an individual who's overcome some kind of conflict internal or external using his or her own means. And my attempt here is to share these stories as a mode of inspiration for others. There's a lot of news about conflict that is reported, but I believe peace is not often reported and it's important to talk about it. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. To make sure that our words are kept, it helps to write, doesn't it? It does. Ultimately, generates the conversation, and you never know where the impact could be. It could be now, it could be 10 years later, but there's always hope with writing. I agree. I think writing helps me clarify what I'm thinking, and it seems like your thinking is right on. In the corporate world today, if we could get your message out there, I would be so delighted to find out that work is a place of peace and progress. Mm -hmm. I look forward to that too. Is there something else you'd like us to know about you or your presentation? As I said, I think the most exciting part for me personally is that 
the model or the framework that I'm about to present at the conference is, is an evolving process. It, it's not something that's frozen, and it keeps better, getting better as I share it with more and more people. So I really look forward to having the, the perspectives of people at the World Conference. Sounds like you're going to have a lot of conversations. I look forward to that. Right. You said you are going to be speaking. How is, now let's suppose that somebody really wants to know more about you. Would you, get, would you be okay to give us your email or your website? Sure. Uh, you can access my official website, which is exalt-solutions.com. And you can also write to me, and my email ID is R-U-K-M-I-N-I at the rate E-X-U-L-T hyphen S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N-S dot com. Great. Let's go back and review your website, exalt hyphen solutions. Dot com and exalt is e x u l t hyphen solutions s o l u t i o n s dot com. I am talking to Rumini about her session that will help us enhance our work environment, help us understand the organizational development, and as she said, it's an evolutionary process. So as you think about which sessions you want to go to. Be sure you check out Rock Rukmini and because she has so much wisdom. You know, you're in a, a really conflict oriented area of Mumbai. How do you handle it with the people you meet every day? As I said, it, it's a choice you make. So every day you wake up and you decide how you want to live your day and which part of you would you like to present out to the world? That there's always a choice no matter how good or bad things around us are, there's always a choice to say, I'm going to give my best and I'm going to accept all of myself and therefore accept the world around me. And I think that really works for me. Boy, I like that. You know, it's almost like every day is an opportunity to practice what you believe, Rukmini, the way you have summarized peace as an evolutionary process and it begins with each of us. I thank you. Before I close today, is there anything else you'd like us to know in your presentation or the way you create peace wherever possible? My process for creating peace is largely stirring an internal dialogue to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where it begins for all of us. And once we are able to accept all aspects of ourselves, and when I say that, I mean that all of us have good and bad and right and wrong within us, and if you're able to accept that, okay, I, I'm the saint and I am the sinner and I'm the victim and I am the rapist, but having known that I choose to be what I deem is right or peaceful, I think that, that that's where peace lies for us. It's not about denying the bad, but it's about saying that, yeah, that could also be me, but I choose not to be that. It's so beautiful. I'm smiling as I'm listening to you. That little phrase, accept yourself, accept all of yourself, is hard for people to do. Yes, but that's largely because of our conditioning, right? We've been taught to reject things. We've been taught to reject terrorists and rapists and murderers, whereas that could be any one of us. It's just, uh -huh. just a choice they made, and therefore there's no point in denying or rejecting it. It's just about saying, yes, that could have been me, but I choose to be something else. Right. Bless you. What an amazing contribution you're making to peace, the individual, the corporation, the workspace, with your work and the solutions that we are facing today in our work corporations and uh, those areas where we may not feel so peaceful. I guess, as you said, when we started our conversation, it begins within. Check out peaceconference2016.org and read more about Rukmini. She will be speaking, as I mentioned, in the work track and invite your friends to listen to this conversation today. Take your iPhone out and push that little red button and record her. And listen again and again. When you listen to her, it goes deep inside. You hear yourself accepting yourself. What a gift. 
And again, this is going to be presented January 15th and 16th, 2016, at the Ontario Convention Center. And I have a very special thanks. As you're listening to Rukmini, I have a special thanks for our co-sponsors, RevolutionaryConversations.net, allowing us to know that every conversation, as Rukmini said, can bring us peace as we accept ourselves and we really listen to those who are with us. Peace begins with each of us, a conversation, a smile, a thought, and it is possible. Rukmini, would you like to close our conversation today? Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Barbara, and I really look forward to having this conversation rolling over to a lot more people and get them thinking. It's possible, and I look forward to meeting you in January. The sessions will include all sorts of speakers. Today you've heard Rukmini Ayer, but we will have 88 more peace pioneers. Rotary International, all 33,000 clubs are invited to join us. Take her talk to your Rotary Club. Let them listen. Put it up there on your screen. Put her picture. Go to our website. It's possible that what she said today can change your life. Peace is possible, and let it begin with me, you, and Rukmini through a wonderful guest. I thank you so much for being part of the peace process. Thank you, Barbara. It's an absolute pleasure.